The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a young woman named Mary. The angel said to her, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. We heard these beautiful words a few weeks ago on Christmas Eve, reminding us of the divinity of God, the presence of angels, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the courage of Mary. I imagine she was blown away by Gabriel's visit, and that was only the first in a series of life-changing and awe-inspiring events in her life. As we know, Mary gave birth to Jesus, and she and Joseph raised him. And now here he is, all grown up, ready to live into the words of the angel Gabriel, and he does. Mark's gospel begins, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Mark then reminds the reader of the connection between Jesus and the Hebrew scriptures, citing Isaiah by way of introducing John the Baptist, prepare a way. People from the whole Judean countryside came to be baptized by John, and John said, I have baptized you with water, but one is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John then baptizes Jesus. And as Jesus comes out of the water, the Spirit descends upon him like a dove, and a voice from heaven says, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Jesus goes immediately into the wilderness where he is tempted by Satan and visited by angels. Then his ministry begins. He has been prepared by the human and divine alike for a life in which his humanity and divinity will be used and challenged. He then calls his first disciples and begins to teach and heal. In Mark's gospel, Jesus gets to work immediately, and by verse 29 in our scripture this morning, he has healed Simon's mother-in-law, cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out demons. He is hard at work. And then he goes to find some solace in prayer. And when he is found by Simon, he leaves his prayer and says, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. This is what he was born for. This is his life. This is his way. This is what he does. The history of Jesus in Mark's gospel started me thinking about birth stories and callings. Jesus' calling is strong, dramatic, powerful, and yet there's a bit of vagueness to it. There is room to move about in God's prophecy brought to Mary from, by Gabriel. He will be great. He will be a ruler. He is the Son of God. There is no rule book here. No explicit directions are given. There are no notes in the margin with helpful details. And we know how that feels, don't we? We feel a call to follow God. We might even hear a voice telling us to feed the hungry. How do we determine exactly what God means us to do? 
This is part of the challenge of following God. We figure it out as we go. We use the tools of prayer and discernment, reflection and meditation. We seek wise counsel. And like Mary, we take the time to ponder. And then we take a step, usually into the unknown, with the faith that God is with us all the way, the faith that Jesus Christ walks by our side the entire time. The life of Jesus is a, an example of the power of living into what you have been given. We know it was not always easy for him. Near the end of his life, he implored God, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. And then Jesus says, yet not my will, but yours be done. In the strength of the call of his life, Jesus also recognizes challenge and pain. But he knew that living into what you were born to be is worth any suffering, humiliation, heartache, and distress. Many of us can probably identify with this. We make choices that we know are right for us and our family and the world, and we come up against obstacles that may cause us to question what we are doing. But when our feet, our hearts, and our souls are firmly planted in the love of God, then the confidence is ours to know that what we are doing is what we came to do. Some in this world experience obstacles that are unjust, unfair, immoral, and just plain wrong. Black Americans have suffered humiliation and both temporary and permanent defeat in the ways they have been treated. We hear stories, we know some history, and we think, well, it's better now. It might be better now for some, but it is not as good as it should be, and it is not as good as it can be. There is still a lot of work to do to get to the place where the words of Martin Luther King Jr. are the reality of this world and not a dream. That his four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. As a nation, we have been ignorant of the power of judgment and the damage it causes. As Christians, we have often forgotten that Jesus said the first commandment of all is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, he said, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than these, Jesus said. We do not have to know someone to love them, but when we know more about a person's life, our life is made richer by the connections we learn about, and our love for them can deepen. So on this first Sunday of Black History Month, I offer you a challenge. Find out more about one of the black Americans who is part of our shared history. Visit our Asbury First Library or the special book cart in the Gathering Center and spend some time browsing the books that the librarians have set out for us so that we can learn more. Take a trip to your local public library. There are over 30 in the Rochester area. And borrow the autobiography of Medgar Evers or a book about the Little Rock Nine. Look on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble for a book to buy that highlights the contributions of black doctors nurses, educators, politicians, clergy, and more. 
honor our shared history by learning more about black Americans who have made us stronger, healthier, safer, and smarter. Black Americans who have raised their voices and risked their lives for justice. Fannie Lou Hamer, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, Medgar Evers, Martin Luther King Jr., Joseph Deering, Dorothy Vaughn, Langston Hughes, James Durham, Maya Angelou, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, Christine Darden, Louis T. Wright, Charles Drew, and many, many more. The lives of these black Americans were harder than they had to be. They stepped into a call that was between God and themselves, and yet they faced obstacles because of the color of their skin and the ignorance of those who made the road harder than it should have been. They lived lives that made a difference for those of us who came along after them. They affected change by the stances they took, the work they did, the way they lived. Their lives are examples of integrity, grit, compassion, intelligence, wisdom, joy, and the most important, the only thing that lasts, the greatest of all, their lives were made up of love. They did the work they were born to do. We recognize and appreciate those who are living and working today, doing what God called them to do. Ida Mae Hickman, Alice Young, Brenda Lee, Lily Stone, Lawrence Hargrave, Cheryl Kojo, Helen Johnson, Tommy Johnson, Richard Irvin, Melba Beals, Jackie Nelson, Ed Stone, Linda Clark, David Paul, Cassandra Jordan, Ike Jordan, Francis Deering Brunarski, and so many more. Each one listened to the voice of God in their heart and answered a call to do what they are here to do in their own unique way, to feed the hungry, educate all people, help people find their way. As they do this and more for all people, they do this for Christ and for God. As I did research for this sermon in these past few days, I found myself imagining the mothers of the people I just named. I pictured them nuzzling their newborn babies, just as Mary cuddled Jesus and whispering to them, you will be great. You are a beloved and cherished child of God. You can do anything. As Jesus and each of those whose names I just spoke lived into the life that was theirs to live, so we can as well. It is not always easy. We are often plagued by situations that challenge us and wear us down, by literal and figurative roadblocks that try to keep us from where we are going, and we persist because we must because we are following God, and there is nothing to keep us from God, and there is nothing that will ever, ever keep God from us. So in those times when you are overwhelmed by all that you have to do, follow Jesus' example and take a moment to step away and pray. Find a spot in your home or neighborhood or workplace where you can be in peace. Take a deep breath 
exhale, and then breathe in again and settle into that physical space and then enter into divine communion with God. Pray all that is on your heart. Share your fears with God. Share your hopes, your dreams, your joys, and your love. Raise concerns for your friends and family and self. Lift prayers of gratitude and thanks for all in your life that is good. Step away when you have to and find peace in prayer. God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, calling her to give birth to and raise Jesus, and she did. She stood by him up until the very last breath of his human life. Gabriel delivered God's prophecy for Jesus, and Jesus fulfilled it. Mary and Jesus both faced incredible challenges on their journeys. Both had the wisdom to know when to stop and step away from time to time. Gabriel told Mary that Jesus would be great, and he was. He was the kind of ruler the world needs. He walked with people and met each one wherever they were, regardless of their condition or circumstance. He was present. He used his divinity to heal, and in his humanity, he connected with those around him. He generously shared his time and his gifts, and he brought love and peace to the world. By his love, we have fullness of life. Live into your own call from God and use the love of Jesus to sustain you as you do, living fully into what you are here to do. Thanks be to God. Amen.